Welcome to the Knowledge for Men show. Your life will never be the same. Your level of success will seldom exceed your level of personal development. I want to die empty of regret. I want to die empty of my best work. We don't understand who we are. Instead, we're living out somebody else's narrative. What one man can do, another man can do. If it's been done, it can be done again. Being yourself and being your truest, most authentic self in every moment. If it scares you or makes you a little afraid, do it. Follow your heart and your gut. The first stage. I think it's finding you, like finding out who I am today. Stuff will not work. You will have things that fail. Success is when you're a happy, fulfilled person. How do you define success? It's your life and you are the creator of the movie script that is your life story. Hey guys, just wanted to offer you a free gift here as a part of being a listener of my show. If you go to kfmfree.com, you can get the top 30 books and top 30 success quotes that every man must live by. So obviously every show we talk about books and we talk about success quotes. And so I've compiled the best of the best out of the last 100 episodes into a short guide. So kfmfree.com and it's all yours. All right, guys, welcome to the show. I'm here with Mas Sajedi, a quantum healer and spiritual healer. I actually attended one of his events not too long ago here in San Diego, and there was something very special and powerful about this man. And I knew I had to get him on the show and to share his story with all of you guys here. So, Mas, happy to have you here. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. All right. And so we start off all the shows, Mass, with a favorite success quote or some sort of saying, it could even be your Mm -hmm. own, that you've lived by and how it's helped you on your journey. Sure. You know, that saying, change your frequency, change your life. What that means, Andrew, is that, you know, most people try to change, say, their life at a physical level. But if we could get down to the core, okay, of, say, where, how that physical, say, existence happens, uh, we can change uh, your patterns quite effectively. And, and that's the level that I work at, at the core, say, frequency level. And that's where people get the massive transformations that they have. In. Okay, so let's get an example of, you said someone working at, at the physical level. So let's take someone's mm-hmm. challenge and, and how is he you know, working at, at a physical level? And then what is it that you're doing at the frequency, at, at the core? And okay. How does this differ to give the audience a better uh, understanding? Okay. Say, for example, that you are trying to you are trying to uh, change, say, relationship patterns. Okay. Okay. Or success patterns, right? You try to make a lot of money, uh, and what do we do? Uh, most of the time, say we say we take a book, a motivational book, or a how-to book. Uh, we attend a seminar, uh, and so on. We meditate, but those are all say physical aspects. And what I do is I go into a deeper layer of, say, where those physical apps, aspects, uh, say, generated from. And once you get to that core level programming, uh, whatever you're doing uh, on the physical aspect can transform quite a bit. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So let's use money, for example. Um, okay. Maybe someone having challenges you know, growing up uh, in the family with money. And, and, and yes. is that the kind of the stuff you were talking about? Like, like yes. seeing those types of patterns that are really exactly. shaping our lives. Okay. Right. Yeah, let me, let me give you this example, Andrew. Okay. And we'll use a smartphone, okay? And when you go purchase a smartphone, it comes with a lot of, say, uh, default, default settings, right? The home screens, uh, you know, the picture of the home screen, the ringtones, and so on and so on. It even has default uh, apps that are on the phone that you might never use, right? But it's taking up resources that are on your new phone. So, and that's the way we are as well. You know, we come with a, say, standard default settings uh, from, say, past lineage, you know, family values, and so on and so on. Uh, I call it spiritual DNA. That's come through into you, uh, which dictates to me uh, just studying over or working on tens of thousands of individuals, I would say over 90% of a person's life has default settings uh, already pre-planned. And that's, and that's why they're called default settings. So, for example, your schooling, uh, your parents, how you, know, you chose your parents, uh, where you go to school, say the type of job, even say the type of, say, uh, person that you're attracted to, right? Whether you're a 
you like blondes or brunettes and so on, those are all pre-programmed in, in you. Now, that doesn't mean that your life is the way it is. Uh, your life is set in stone. Uh, again, just like the home screen, you can change, you can go into the settings tab and change that. Most people tend not to, say, change or, say, have access to those settings. Uh, and then what we do is we try to change our lives with those settings in place. Right? We, uh, and then what happens is the default settings take over. So what I help you do is go back to that admin panel, you know, whether it's a setting tab or whatever it might be for you, in this case a smartphone, uh, and help you change the home screen, help you change the ringtone, help you change, say, your definition of success, wherever you've got it from, help you change your definition of how relationships work for you, no matter where you got that from. Um, and then worse more, as you grow up from the ages of zero to six, you pull in, say, apps, because you need to run your life, you know, as you get older, from, say, parents, and so on and so on. Then you absorb all their stuff as well and bring it into this lifetime. So you have these apps running, uh, and what do we do? We, we try to, say, shift, or we try to get away from those running apps by closing them down. But, you know, if you look at the menu bar, they're still running in the background. Or sometimes there's hidden apps that we don't even know about, right, that keep running in the background for us. Uh, and that's why, no matter, say, what we do, how hard we've tried, it all we always come back. Um, we kind of recycle ourselves. We always come back to the same situation over and over and over again. But what if there was a way or what if there was a program, and I call it exponential intelligence, um, that totally deletes that app from you, from your settings, and then you're free to create, say, any other app, any other condition, and you evolve or operate from that standard. And does something like this happen instantly, or does this take time? Um, <clears throat> well, you were in that, uh, in that seminar with me. Some individuals, actually, it did happen to them instantly. Where, um, and I can give you lots of examples um, where this woman, and this is, this is not an extreme example, although it might sound extreme. Uh, this woman, she couldn't walk. She had severe pain for 45 years. Uh, she's tried everything. She was in a car accident. Uh, she's trying meditations, uh, going to having surgeries and so on and so on. Uh, and nothing happened. Uh, I worked on her for about five minutes uh, in the audience without even touching her. And at the end, she, uh, she actually walked away carrying her walker. So, uh, and that's not an extreme. More and more, say, cases are like that. Um, obviously, you know, maybe that your group, <clears throat> not, I'm sure there's some physical issues going on. But a lot of people say want success in that area. So if you remove those blocks, yes, they do happen, say, rather fast. It doesn't take years and years and years and years to transform. Wow. Actually, oh. like within months. All right. So I, we're all interested now in, <laughs> you kind of got our ears listening now. So take us back a little bit. You know, okay. how, how does this journey start? How do you have this ability to heal people? Well, where did this come from? And, you know, take us back to how this all started. Sure. It happened, well, on my second near-death experience. Uh, but the journey started a long, long time ago. You know, I was always intuitive as a kid. You know, I, closed, I used to close that down because I was very different than everybody else. Right? I wanted to fit in. Uh, so I closed that down. But in my early 20s, at a warehouse job, I had my first near-death experience. Uh, my jaws got crushed in a warehouse accident. And I'll give you the highlights. At that moment, during that time, up to that point, Andrew, I was a lot like, say, the, the individuals that listen to your show. I went through, say, the religious path. I studied all the religions thinking, well, if I knew, you know, the keys, it must have the keys to, say, that general sense of well-being, right? And abundance. Now I call it, nowadays I call it 360 degrees of abundance. I, I scoured the, the religious books. I, I scoured, that didn't work out. You know, because there was keys missing. I knew a lot of religious people. They weren't happy. You know, luckily my family was you know, medium, medium to wealthy. And so we knew a lot of wealthy friends. And I was looking at them and, well, they weren't that healthy either. So it wasn't about the money. My adventure, okay, or my search, because I, I and, and by the way, I attended tons and tons of motivational seminars, bought a lot of books and so on and so on. But it always came back again to that same general pattern. Uh, my first 
near-death experience, again, that warehouse accident, opened me up to this, to this time frame where I understood, say, who I was. Okay? And what I mean by that is, as I got, had my jaws crushed, I started pulling away and seeing myself as if I was looking at myself in a mirror, going further and further away. And then I started to realize, I go, wow, you know, my neck is really torqued. It must, it must hurt quite a bit. And then I realized, it's like, well, why doesn't it hurt? And then that's when I realized I had died. Okay? And I was pulling away. I was watching my physical form uh, where my, while my consciousness was going through the rail car, just like they do in the movies, you know, how it just uh, floats through the metal barrier. Uh, floated through there. I uh, ended up in, say, this layer or this level where you review your life. Um, so... With that review, everything was perfect. There was no time. There was no distance. I actually lived 22 years at that time in a mere, say, flash of a second or maybe a second at most. So time and distance really got distorted. And, I, and I'll talk about time and distance more. But, you know, so disconnecting from time was that key lesson there. And then knowing as soon as I separated from my physical form, I understood that I was much greater, say, than the sum of of all the experiences I've had, or all the experiences I've had, including, say, the family lineage or spiritual DNA as well. And that really opened me up to show or tell me that, yes, this proves to me that something is grander, or I am grander than, again, the sum of my parts here. So, and Can you elaborate more on how you, you disconnect from time? Like, wh what does that mean? You know, you've heard people say that, uh, you know, they see their life flash by. Uh, you, your life doesn't really flash by. You actually relive every moment of your life. It's like, it's like replay. You are in every moment of your life. You're not seeing your life flash by. It's like a dream state from point zero to up to that point where you died. And every moment, obviously, is through you know, grace, love, beauty. There is no I should have or I could have or I would have. But see that 22 years was compressed in our physical time or, on, or our linear time in, say, less than a second or two. And that's what I mean by disconnecting from time. Time is really a variable here. And, and you know, if you get into the quantum physics sides, uh, Albert Einstein and so on, uh, they're actually showing that time is a variable. Uh, in fact, the faster you go, uh, time seems to stand still. Wow, this is uh, you know a different kind of conversation that we're having, but I'm 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 really interested in in taking it even deeper. So from these experiences, uh, you know, you're helping people, you're healing people, mm -hmm. traveling the world, doing this. Yes. Uh, what would you say are some common blocks that you keep seeing over and over again that are preventing someone, like a guy or even a woman, from breaking through, or they feel stuck? They're not able yeah. to, they're just living the same, it's like Groundhog Day every day and they want change, but every, every, it's just the same and they can't yeah, break through that. It's the same, exactly. Um, can, I, can I explain, can I tell you my second near-death experience? Because that really uh, kind of opens yeah, up. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, these are profound, go ahead. The second near-death experience, and this one, uh, again, a little shorter, uh, I had a drowning accident. I was in Belize, mm. uh, I got sucked into a hole in the river. I was inner tubing, got sucked into... And, and, and again, I try to struggle, but the water pressure, you, you just for example, imagine a tunnel that you're in, about a man-sized hole, uh, man-sized hole cover um, that I got sucked into. So trying to crawl out, I gave up, submitted my will, if you will. Uh, and then again, I watched my body float away. Uh, I sent it into, this time I sent it through the rock, through the water, and into this heavenly blue space. Okay? And, you know, a lot of people... You know, they say they see the ton of light. Uh, they see their friends and family. Again, those are all stages that you go through. But again, like this time, I ascended through the tunnel into this vast opening, this beautiful blue space. At that level, Andrew, that is where uh, you can completely void yourself of time. You can completely void yourself of, say, a human identity. Okay? Uh, again, there is no time or space. You are totally complete at that level. Further, uh, as I got custom to it, say the consciousness, for example, if you took anesthesia, right, and your mind was mentally awake, you couldn't feel your body. That's basically how it feels. Um, but you can go beyond that 
where you don't even know have a consciousness. You are just like this vast universe that's out there. In that point in time, uh, you are downloaded or you are connected with all the knowledge that ever was, ever will be, um, into you. And that's what I've done. And very, very, very few people, hardly if any, actually ascend to that heavenly blue space because they just can't, say, control or maintain it. Uh, but I will, what I've managed to do when I've come back in is actually say, stay connected to that heavenly blue space. And that's how I say help people transform uh, in any area of their life. Wow. Both of these near-death experiences, mm-hmm. you know, look, how have they impacted your work? Uh, well, before I was a computer programmer. Yeah, yeah. Going into <clears> I didn't, I, you know, <laughs> I, I didn't, uh, I didn't, you know, believe in the spiritual stuff. Or um, again, you know, what I do is not anything religious. It, it's way beyond, you know, what we think of spirituality, and way beyond what actually what we think of really anything. And that's why I really don't have a definition for myself. Um, but it's really a space of being. Okay. Uh, what I see when I see people, whether they're in front of me or whether they're online like we are, or whether, say, they talk about, say, a loved one has addictions, right? A lot of times people want me to work on them, trying to help them transform, and they don't even know. Uh, I can tap into them and see, say, the patterns, if you will, or the back-end coding programming of how that spirit is created or how that body is created in physical form. Uh, And that's your blueprint level. You go beyond the physicalness. Once you can edit, and that's what I've been given access to or granted access to, is your, say, admin level access. And most people can't access that admin level. So no matter how many classes you take, no matter what you do, try to get away. Like you said earlier, you know, you have this reoccurring pattern that keeps coming back, like that Groundhog Day. You know, it never changes no matter what you do. Um, But what if you could change your blueprint at your core level, that higher, say, uh, that, and that's, this is uh, about exponential intelligence. Um, you know, you connect to, again, that core level of how you were created. Uh, you get, say, fantastic changes, if not instantaneously, pretty close, like within a few days to a few weeks. So what happens? Like you, you help someone change their blueprint, and then mm-hmm. what, what do they do after? Do they just start taking action or they start like how does this impact their, their sure. business or finance or their success in life okay. well okay say for example and even um even people listening to this conversation andrew mm-hmm. uh, for those people who are sensitive um uh, whether you know it or not you might actually feel a little different so if you're driving and listening to this podcast guys just be just be a little careful because people do get disoriented but anyway it's a state of being so say for example i work on them through this podcast or through a meditation, I call them a meta healing, um, or through a group healing where there's you know a large number, a few hundred to a few thousand people that I work on, uh, whatever it is, I generate those frequencies that envelop you and you start transforming from the inside out. Okay? Once you start transforming from the inside out, you get, uh, say, connected or magnetized to people, places, things, remedies, whatever it is that you need in your life to say transform. There's two ways. One, I uh, change your frequency and then your life just naturally like switches over. And this is, uh, again, I don't, I don't cure anybody. I don't claim I cure anybody, but we've had over, you know, dozens and dozens of individuals with say cancer tumors or, um, you know, uh, mango sized tumors, their tumors like disappear within like a matter of weeks or turn. These are documented cases, Andrew. Um, and those are, again, those are the extreme, those are the physical, because, you know, we can obviously say, see the physicalness. But, you know, people transform in, in finances or relationships as well. Um, so I help you change your frequency, and then something transforms. Or two, I help you change your frequency, uh, and then you get attracted to, again, the right people, places, things, remedies, experiences, whatever you need to, say, further your growth. Um, it's really not nothing, anything special, though. Uh, the way I see it. Yeah, yeah, this is interesting. So I'm wondering also Mm -hmm. what you're saying, some people may just disagree with, some people may not agree with that. How do you 
handle the opinions of other people when you're doing this work? Um, you know, some of the, my best skeptics, yeah, actually that was me, because I'm a programmer, Andrew. You know, if, say, a line of code doesn't work, right, it, the, your program just doesn't work. So when I first started out doing this, you know, I, I, I thought it was, well, happenstance or just, you know, coincidental. But, you know, these coincidences kept adding up and adding up and adding up uh, when I, after I worked on individuals. So I couldn't, you know, I couldn't say, say chalk it up to coincidence. Um, some of my best experiences, like I said, it was actually through people uh, that I've worked on that they didn't even know that I was working on them. You know, a lot of addictive type uh, personalities, you know, they're not open to it. So I work on their love. I worked on I worked on them through their loved ones, and then you know their life turns around. So that was a really a good, you know, awakening point that hey, there is something out there that I do. Um, what I found now is that I can actually bypass say the negativity or the belief systems uh, of most most individuals, um, and even yeah, almost all individuals actually. For some individuals, like less than 5%, it takes a little longer. Okay? But you do feel or you do see the changes uh, in your life. Um, so, uh, in fact, the more questioning you are, the easier it works for you because it allows you to bring into your own consciousness how, say, this stuff works. Um, again, uh, your question is at a conscious level. Um, and it, it bypasses the conscious level. It goes <laughs> to your admin level. So, so Mas, mm -hmm. why do you do what you do? What <laughs> is, is the why here? Why do I do what I do? Uh, you know, initially, Andrew, before my second near death experience, you know I, I, you know, I was a programmer. I wanted to make a cool program and you know, sell it to Facebook or Google or something for a couple million bucks and I'd be happy. Um, but again, you know, I worked on a lot of, say, millionaire types, uh, and, you know, they've got a ton of money, and, you know, I'm sure that your audience uh, is seeking for that ton of money, but uh, it's not about the money. I'm not saying money doesn't make you happy, but it's really a, a self-general sense of well-being uh, that's there that comes into you, uh, and that's what's important. So when I got into, say, working or transforming people, uh, that was, that was really a key. It really satisfied me because I've always wanted to help people at a, I mean, really, really help people. Um, you know, not just, you know, put a band-aid on. But this actually really, say, transforms individuals' lives. And, you know, people who have been struggling with, say, finances, uh, they come back to me after a few months and go, you know, and they thank me. Or people who've been trying to resolve an issue or a disease or something, you know, psychosomatic, you know, they go to psychologists for 10, 20, 30 years, uh, and they have a couple sessions with me, and you know their life is transformed, uh, and they come back and say thank, you know, thank me, and so on. It's just such a gratifying reward to actually say make an impact on people's lives, and and uh, that's that's what's uh, really rewarding for me. Yeah, yeah, I can I can see that. I could I could just kind of feel that going through just listening to what you're saying and mm -hmm. uh, in your voice. No. Yep. What what would you say was like, like I, I'm, I'm one of the biggest things that I keep getting over and over. We may mm -hmm. have alluded a little bit to it earlier, but is yes. the inability to take action and be consistent to keep getting yes. results. Like the only yes. way to really make an impact to to change your life, you have to be willing. You have to take some action. You have to be yes. be willing to change. And and so there are just some guys who will you know will will read they'll listen to this podcast and i want them to be able to move and and even mm -hmm. if they have to stop listening to this podcast maybe this is a distraction and, and it's time for them to just close sure. the book and close the podcast and just go and, and create and do what it is that they want to do but some guys that i speak with are are, are unable to take action towards something mm -hmm. that they so badly want yes um Again, those are core level programmings that I see in individuals. Uh, yes, they see, see, they see the, the goal that mm -hmm. they want. Yeah. But a lot of times, you know, they have something that just binds them or just holds them back. 
sometimes I see them say stuck in the mud or sometimes there's actually say a leash or something that just like binds them. Um, you know, kind of like those, uh, the, the elephants in the, in the zoo, you know, they have this rope. They can only go so far. Uh, they've been so used to been being pulled on that rope that they don't even try anymore. Um, what, what this does, it goes to the core of, say, why that rope was created in their lives. Once you disconnect, okay, uh, you'll start to see that the wherewithal for you to go forward naturally comes because your organism starts to live again. Um, your, your organism is a self-perpetuating organism at a cellular structure or memory. Uh, that's all you were ever created for, to perpetuate and grow and expand to your ultimate. Okay? Uh, again, once you're set free, once you're, that baggage is removed from you, uh, you naturally start to shine brilliantly, and then you go forward. The wherewithal, again, the, I always kind of joke, the secret of the secret that kind of they missed in the book, you know, that secret, uh, actually comes into you. The wherewithal actually shows up. Yes, there is work involved, but the tools that you need, the people that you need and so on, start showing up for you. You start to gain strength and so on. Um, you know, that same point, um, and again, I said I'm not really anything special. I'm actually here normal showing you guys what, say, the abilities that we have. Right? Uh, and by that I mean the same way I got connected to, say, a higher power of myself, right? or I call it pure source. Um, that same, say, fire that started within me when I had a near-death experience, I actually bring that into you. Now, I'm not telling you, you know, you need to come to me. I'm not telling you that I'm the guru or know-it-all and all that. But actually what I do is say, enlighten that fire uh, in you, that connection, that same connection that was way, made in me. Uh, I start that fire. And once that fire starts, there's no way to stop it this time around. And you do go forward, whether you like it or not. Wow. And yep. does this fire just stay with them to be consistent over time? Like they can continue to produce these results over time? Yes. Yes. Um, when I work on you or once, and, and there's tons and tons of people, you know, whether I work on them or they hear my voice or something like that. Yes, they do switch. They can never go back to where they were. Okay? Um, and they always say, go forward. Um, you know, although if you do say nothing else with me, which is totally fine. You can do it on your own. Uh, I'm, not, I'm kind of that spiritual geek, though. I can just do it, say, faster for you. And that's where a lot of people say, come back to me. They see the results in their life. It's not like they want to they resolve more of that result, but they want more of life. Uh, they want to have it all. And then they come back. It's like, well, what else is there out there that I can do and expand? It's really like turning their life on for the first time. It's quite amazing. Wow. Wow. Well, like an awakening. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah, really good stuff. I'm really enjoying this conversation. I'd like to now go into what I call the knowledge round. So just going to ask you some rapid fire questions here sure. uh, just to get some more stuff going here. So uh, okay. are you ready for the knowledge round, Moss? Yes. <laughs> All right. So. All right, guys, if you're not reading books, then you're getting left behind. Somebody spent their entire life learning some invaluable lesson. And the best format that anyone could ever put it in is a book. It's the shortest, fastest, simplest way to consume content. So I know there are so many books available and we talk about books all the time on the podcast. So there must be so many running through your head and you're wondering, where do I begin? Well, I've compiled the top 30 books and success quotes from all of my guests in, in the last 100 episodes, so you can get them all for free. If you go to kfmfree.com, you can simply download the top 30 books that every man must live by. Again, that's kfmfree.com. Welcome to the Knowledge Round, where the guests will be asked rapid-fire questions to give the audience invaluable pieces of wisdom to help transform their lives. Starting in three, two, one, showtime. You know what I'm getting from you is that you're really on your, uh, you're on purpose. Like you're a man of purpose. Mm -hmm. Like you're moving. Yes. You you know what you're going. You you have this purpose. You're pursuing it. And so, what advice would you give to someone? who doesn't have that, who is, who is now feeling lost and maybe even unsure of mm -hmm. what their purpose is. Sure. You know, to get that purpose, uh, just like a GPS signal, okay? Um, you know, that GPS doesn't know where you want to go 
uh, if it doesn't know where you are right now. So if you really want, I mean, if you're broke, uh, if your relationships aren't good, you know, try not to get away from it, but analyze all the details of what's broken. And then say your higher self kicks in and goes, oh, this is where we are. This is where we want to go. And it sets, up, sets out a course for you. Simple as that. I like it. Simple. And, and what was holding you back from becoming the man you are now today? Uh, what was holding me back is quite an understanding, again, a physical knowledge that if I accumulated, say, a ton of money, I would be safe and secure. Uh, mm. In fact, uh, after my near-death experience, uh, you know, I had a $2 million home. I had the, all the toys. I had a yacht and all that stuff. I lost all that. Andrew, not a lot of people know that. Uh, I lost all that. And in one of these uh, deep, say, broken down states, um, uh, this, uh, this voice came into me. It's like, now that you've lost everything, you know, are you still not the same person? And that's when things turned around. That, that's where things started, say, reaccumulating into my life. Um, and it was fantastic. Say, the money, the wealth, uh, the toys, all that started coming back in. You know, when. I think it was um, Andrew Carnegie said, when a man is pushed and shoved, uh, he has a chance to learn something about himself. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And can you name a person who's had a large impact on your life, like a mentor? Uh, who is this person and how has this person impacted your life? Well, my father, uh, he's really a hard worker. Um, so, you know, he's uh, really, to say, deepened the level of work and commitment uh, for me. Um, but, you know, after my near-death experience, I have actually have four guides, you know, and yes, they do sound religious, um, but uh, they have a blend. So it, it, I guess these are spiritual guides, if you will. Uh, they're, they're Buddha, Muhammad, Jesus, and some other alien form uh, individual. I know it sounds kind of weird out there, um, but anyway, those individuals, say, create my sphere. And I'm interested in these mentors. How, how do you communicate with these mentors? Um, yeah, after my near-death experience, Andrew, I had about three and a half years of dark times, dark ages. Uh, and again, nothing religious, but even Jesus at his level, you know, or Buddha at his level, uh, they go through some dark times, again, to disconnect from humanity or, or, or being human. Um, and I was connected to a pure source connection and, and the knowledge that was coming into me was so great, I, I couldn't understand it. Uh, the next time around, it's like, okay, I'll give you these four, say, spirit guides uh, to help you understand or help you dumb down so you understand it. And, uh, and that's how they came about for me. Wow, this is uh, this is interesting. <laughs> uh, this is good. You know, I'm always interested in hearing and learning uh, fr from uh, different walks of life. I'm interested in what are you reading? Like, what what are three would you say of your most like influential books that have helped you on your journey, and and why? Um, you know, what I don't I don't read a lot anymore. Actually, the knowledge that I know and so on. Uh, again, those are in the ethers. Just like all the inventions, uh, I think. Uh, who was it? Not Einstein. Uh, Thomas Edison. He said, uh, inventions are in the air, right? or thoughts are in the air. So I actually pick up from there. But Eckhart Tolle, they're really a fantastic individual. I read, I've read a lot of, a lot of biographies. Um, you know, uh, Michael Jackson is actually one of them because he was such a great entertainer. And this sounds kind of strange, but um, I studied Adolf Hitler, not to say not for the atrocities that he did, but how did he say connect to so many people, right? Well, if he would have used that strength to transform people in a good way, imagine how powerful um, or how, say, fantastic this world could have been, right? Uh, so that ability to connect. So I studied a little bit about him. Um, so looking at it like as... Uh, his ability to influence, like he, that was a skill yes. that he obviously had, his ability to influence others, but obviously what he yes. did with it wasn't uh, the, no, be the best uh, to do. <laughs> no, not at all, right. not at all. And, and, and again, you can delete this this part if you want. Um, um, uh, well, let's see who else. Um, uh, again, a lot of autobiographies that I've read. Um, so. Okay, yeah, I'm always reading autobiographies. Uh, finished yep. up Steve Jobs, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh yeah, I did. Uh, I, I, I read Steve Jobs. 
Yeah. Uh, really Johnny good. Carson. Yeah, good books. Okay, so understanding kind of you reading about historical successful mm-hmm. people who've really made an impact on on yes. the world, who've really altered the world in a way. Yes. Um, okay, so what would you say? This this is more of a scenario, Moss, but let's say you had 60 seconds with mm-hmm. your 20-year-old self. What would you tell him to do and what would you tell him not to do? Uh, I would tell him to be more real, not more realistic, but more adventurous. Okay, really go out there. You know, when I was 20, uh, I was really shy. You know, so a lot of people are like that. They're yeah, yeah. Uh, indifferent. But I would try as many things as possible. Uh, when I was, t- uh, if I was twenty again, um, even say some of the bad stuff, if you will, I would talk to as many people as possible. Uh, I would get, say, some type of, say, sales job, okay, hard sales, uh, whether it's phone sales or cold calling or anything like that. That is one of the best ways to gain confidence in yourself and have or speak and have a voice. I was one of the shyest kids, uh, especially even at the age of twenty. And that, those, that job really forced me to go beyond uh, and, well, get out in the world. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I'd recommend that. That's a good one. And what would you say is an underrated characteristic, an underrated characteristic that you believe you know, every person should work on? Mm-hmm. Uh, is being selfish. And I know that sounds kind of weird. <laughs> okay. Um, can I tell you a little story? Yes, please, uh, it's, it's, please. It's a quick, it's a quick little story. Go ahead. <clears throat> so this uh, this father, you know, he was trying to get some work done, uh, and this little kid kept coming in, you know, trying to play with him and so on like that. And he he was reading this newspaper, and it was a picture of a man, and he tore up the newspaper, and he goes, "Son, can you go put this, you know, put this back together as a puzzle?" And just in a f- in a few minutes, the kid came back, and it's like, "Oh, Dad, I, I I put them together," and the father was amazed. He said, "Well, how did you do it so fast?" It's like it was easy. There's a picture of a world on the other side. Once the world was complete, the man was complete. You know, so so in this in this scenario, when I say being selfish, you know, try to complete yourself. So many people go out there and try to help other people, and they get wounded. And how many people can you really help? Um, you know, again, be complete, be whole. Okay, take that time, and that's what I mean by saying being selfish. Take that time to be yourself understand yourself at a deep, deep level. Buddha did it. Uh, Jesus did it. All those great, those great individuals, they went out in the woods 10, 15, 20 years. You don't have to do that anymore. Um, again, right? that's selfish time to learn every aspect of themselves. They came back out like a strong warrior, to say, transforming not only themselves, not only their worlds, but everybody else around them. Yeah. And I, I think even... Right now, more than ever, there's this kind of nice guy syndrome where it's like wanting to please others first. Yes. And, you know, I think it's very, you know, this is the Knowledge for Men podcast. I think it's very relevant for a man to hear that it's yeah. good and in many ways healthy uh, to be a little selfish sometimes. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So I, that's, I, you know, I wasn't expecting that, but I do, uh, I, I do encourage that, especially for guys who are very, uh, very kind of people pleaser, uh, very submissive, like wanting to uh, get validation through pleasing others. I think selfishness. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I'm not be, I'm not saying is like you got to grab the last piece or whatever. whatever. <laughs> right. Like, right. That right. kind of selfishness, guys. I'm not talking about. Right. Right. But no. I'm taking the time to understand yourself. Yeah. No. I, I think we all get, we get that part. Well, yes. kind of. Even if you have to summarize some of your main points or introduce some new points here, uh, mm-hmm. what would you say is your philosophy on life and success? Uh, again, it goes back to changing your frequency, changing your life. You know, there, I, I listen to your show here and there, Andrew. Fantastic content. You know, but you know that content say sits above, uh, I'd say a distorted, um, a distorted foundation. What if say you could change that distorted foundation into a strong foundation? So, so the the individuals that you have on your show, you know, the, all that fantastic knowledge that you have on your show starts to absorb into you internally and you start being that individual. You don't have to force yourself from the outside in. Uh, you start being from the inside out. And it's a lot easier. It's a lot faster. It's more efficient that way. So, what uh, is, And that's what this is all about. Yeah. Um, yeah. I.e. Exponential intelligence. This is good. And mm-hmm. what is something that a listener could do 
to start changing their frequency so that they could be absorbing this mm-hmm. content? Like, what is is there something that they could do sure. even now or um, yeah, when they get home? Or yes, uh, you know, analyze every detail of yourself, the way you put on your shoes. And I know it sounds mundane, but it's amazing how we are so hypnotized in this world. You know, we drive to work, we take a shower and so on and so on. Our mind is somewhere else. We start texting, right? Our mind is somewhere else. No matter what you do, your only purpose was to be here in physical form, okay? And understand it at a deep level. Once you understand yourself, again, by noticing all the details, if you're taking a shower, just note you know, the water temperature and so on, how it falls on your skin, on your hair, all the little details. If you're shaving, uh, do you ever look at that person in the mirror? Probably not, you know. Uh, Start looking at uh, what's happening. If you're washing, if you're cleaning, whatever it is, if you're driving, look at your hands, look at, you know, all the body parts, feel your body part. Um, That way, your higher self will start coming into you. You know, even if you guys meditate, most meditations, what do you do? You escape your body and go up. you know, into the ethers. This actually pulls your spirit into you, your higher self into you. Once your spirit, say, acknowledges who you are, the abundance that you rightfully own naturally start coming into you. They naturally start attracting into you. So be completely aware. So having a higher level of awareness about the self. Yes. Yes, exactly. Okay. All right. Well, this is this has been just a fantastic interview here, Mass, you. and you know, you. I really appreciate you know what you're sharing with my audience. So that concludes the knowledge on there. I'm excited to know what is what are you going to do with this? This is a you know a, you you very uh, <laughs> like what is the future for yourself? Like what are you working uh, to do? What do you see yourself doing in the future? It is so crazy, Andrew. You know, my business multiplies at least every three to four months. We just like multiply. And, and I'm giving you this example, okay, guys, because once you connect, and this is how I've helped, say, thousands of other people as well. They always tell me the same thing. It's like, well, what did you do specifically, you know, to get to where you got? And they go, I don't know. It just happened. You know, whether it's in the health, uh, wealth, relationships, um, uh, general sense of well-being, whatever it might be. Uh, it's really about once you, say, come into that abundance point, uh, everything starts getting connected into you. So what I see for myself, uh, I see like masses where I can say transform individuals. Right now, I mean, I do individuals of groups of a few hundred to say a thousand or so that listen to me and we do these group meta healings and so on and they transform. I see actually that getting into a bigger sphere. I see myself, um, um, and by the way, this is the way some of my abilities work. If you say, ask me a question, I connect into the ethers and kind of tell you so thank you for asking me that because i can't really connect like and see you know my own life if you will um but i see talking to say uh people of power and transforming their decisions uh to say create a better world not a not a control type world but a win-win type world right where everybody say gets to grow and gets to be complete not just a few so hmm and, and do you believe that world can exist? Uh, yes. Uh, we're in the transformation already, and that's why you're seeing, say, you know, the religious systems, you know, for example, the Catholic Church, the Islam religion, all those people, you know, they're trying to take, re- take control because they're losing all their members. The governments, they're failing. Financial systems are failing because uh, this is a fantastic time to be on Earth. Uh, all those things are failing because a new infrastructure has to come in to, uh, again, hold on to, say, the pure patterns of who we are. So, yes, definitely. All right. I like this. All right, Mas, thank you so much for being on the show here. For all the mm-hmm. listeners, they can follow up with Mas uh, just by Googling his name, Mas Sajady. So, M-A-S-S-A-J-A-D-Y. Yes. And mm-hmm. uh, his website pops right up, number one on Google. I'm actually looking at it right now. So, you guys can follow up with him there. Would you like to share... What else you sure. have going on? Well, I'm I'm starting in my own podcast, Andrew. Okay, uh, which is and it's called Exponential Intelligence, a Moss EI. And what we've done for the individuals here on Knowledge for Men is actually created a a, a page. So it's a teleform where you can log in and 
whether phone or, or computer and you can log in and like learn more about me. In there I'll do uh, a meta healing, a sample meta healing for you so you can actually say understand what I do at a deeper level. Uh, and it's usually $199 value but if you go to this page and put in KFW100, uh, K- I'm sorry, KFM100, Knowledge for Men 100, uh, it's totally free for you and you can uh, attend for free. So it's quite dynamic uh, for you. And um, you can go to masajati.com forward slash KFM. Uh, again, masajati.com forward slash KFM uh, for more details on that. All right, Mas, thank you so much for your time and uh, being vulnerable and sharing your life experiences here with my people. This has been great. Uh, oh, thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Knowledge for Men podcast. Hundreds of interviews and a million downloads later, we're continuing to build an international movement, and we've just started. So if you enjoyed this episode, go ahead and leave a review in iTunes. It really helps to grow the podcast. Guys, 2015 is the official year of living with purpose, where every day you do only the things that matter to you. You wake up, live with purpose, and take massive action towards the life you want. Check out kfmfree.com to get free tools I've created to help you crush life. Again, that's kfmfree.com. This is your host, Andrew Farabee, and I'll see you in the next episode.